AMD's next-gen GPUs might be even faster than we previously thought. Hundreds of millions of Dell computers are vulnerable to an attack, as well as Dogecoin decided to keep going up. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your host, Brett. We're gonna be diving into the hottest tech news I can find on the internet as quickly as possible so you can get right back into what it was you were doing right before you clicked on this video. So let's go ahead and talk. <coughs> <coughs> I'm good. So let's go ahead and talk about the next gen GPUs that we're expecting out of AMD. In an episode of Hot News two days ago, we talked about how RDNA 3 was expected to have multi chip modules, which would make it twice as fast as the current generation of chips at the high end and just as fast as the 6900 XT at the mid end, which is honestly really fascinating and would be a huge improvement, obviously, but we're only expecting those cards to come out later next year. But the latest rumor that's come out is that it might be even faster than two times like we talked about in that episode. So the current anticipation is now that they are gonna be three times as fast as the current 6900 XT that's out on the market with this tweet from known leaker Kitty Yuko saying 2.5 times is too little because you take the doubling of the multi-chip module which would give you two times the performance you add in some IPC increase would get you up to 50% but according to this rumor it would be even higher three times the performance maybe 2.75 regardless that would be an incredibly fast GPU and with it having 160 compute units over 10,000 stream processors it would be a monumentally fast card there's also some indication that the ray tracing would be updated on the RDNA 3 which makes sense because AMD is committed to that but the report is that it'll be as fast as Ampere is currently but by the time that AMD releases RDNA 3 Nvidia will likely have launched their next generation as well considering they're not trying to get this out as soon as possible. But now talking about my side of this, this obviously seems too good to be true. This seems to be the hype cycle that goes around with every single AMD launch. Hey, we're here. We expect it to be up here for pricing way down here and they're gonna beat the crap out of Nvidia and Yay! finally redeem us. That has been the narrative since Polaris since Vega, since Navi, it's constantly been this never ending chasing scene of, oh, they're finally gonna top NVIDIA with this next card. Obviously, the 6900 XT is a great card. It beats the RTX 3090 in a lot of scenarios, but it's not the demolition that we are wanting. It wasn't 100% satisfactory. We wanted that to be the affordable card, which wrecked everybody, and this, rumor kind of satisfies that need, right? Like it brings that into perspective of like, AMD is gonna crush everything. And usually AMD brings out really good value for a really good price, but not anything fundamentally changing the entire landscape of what's going on. Is it possible that they could do it? Absolutely. Could our DNA 3 be that monumental leap to put them over the fence of Nvidia? Possibly, but we've heard this time and time again, and I'm going to hold my breath on this one. Three times better performance. It's too good to be true, honestly, at this point, until we get a lot closer to launch. Even two times is kind of expecting a lot out of a fledgling architecture with multi-chip modules. It's just not something that I'm going to be placing any bets on. But let me know what you think think of RDNA 3. Do you think it could be possibly three times as fast? two times as fast? Are you expecting even a 50% improvement would be great generation upon generation. So let me know what you think of it down below in the comments. But now let's take a moment to go ahead and thank today's episode sponsor of Hot News. Today's episode of Hot News is brought to you by Skillshare. In case you haven't heard of them before, Skillshare is the online learning community where millions come together to take the next step in their creative journey. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people such as myself in wide ranging topics from productivity freelance and entrepreneurship, photography, graphic design, and they recently launched a course, YouTube Success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD, which I have absolutely loved. Just seeing Marquez Brownlee's process of going through a tech review and then implementing it, it's allowed me to take some of his strategies and some of his aims and how he reviews and implement them in our videos that we do here. And Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads and they're always launching new premium classes like the one with MKBHD so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. 
I constantly love being challenged in learning new things, which is why I'm thankful to have Skillshare as the sponsor of today's episode of Hot News. And the first 1,000 of our subscribers that click the link in the video description can get a free trial of the premium membership on Skillshare. So check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring today's episode. I am a great magician. Your clothes are black. And in the horrifying news of the day, Dell has revealed that they have hundreds of millions of computers dating from all the way back to 2009 that are vulnerable to privilege escalation attacks. Hundreds of millions of Dell computers are vulnerable with five high severity flaws from a flaw known as DBUtil. There's no evidence that this has been used in the wild, but the scary part is that this could actually be activated remotely and organizations that have remote updates enabled for their client machines are at risk since the flaw can be exploited over the network. An attacker with access to an organization's network may also gain access to execute code on unpatched Dell systems and use this vulnerability to gain local elevation of privilege. Attackers can then leverage other techniques to pivot to the broader network like lateral movement. So that's a big yikes. Get your Dell thing patched. Dell is working with Sentinel Labs to get this patched, but be concerned, especially if you have a think client rollout of Dell machines in your entire network maybe fix it. And Intel is trying to fix their mobile laptops by making them faster. And we've got some leaked specs of the upcoming Tiger Lake H processors, the 11th gen 10 nanometer chips, eight core 16 threads on the high end for the i9. The i7 is also getting that, but the top i9 11980HK is gonna have five gigahertz boost on up to two cores, 4.9 gigahertz on four cores and 4.5 gigahertz on all eight cores. Gonna be potentially really fast chips. Can't wait to see the benchmarks when those finally come out. We also got a leak of the Galaxy Z Fold. The Galaxy Z Fold 3 might be the first foldable phone with an under display camera so that it's even more just high advanced technology that semi regularly doesn't work very well. Speaking of not working very well, it's time for the GameStop Bitcoin Ethereum Dogecoin update. GameStop not working very well. It's just, it's done nothing for several days. Just somebody poke it with billions of dollars a stick and just like get it, get it to move somewhere. But the entire crypto market seeing green Bitcoin up near Nearly 5% to 57,000. Ethereum up 2% to 3,500. And Dogecoin, the big talk of the day, up 4%, but down from its all time high of 69 cents. Yes, Dogecoin peaked at 69 cents. Now it just has to hit $4.20, and all of the memes are satisfied. But Epic isn't satisfied, and Apple isn't satisfied. It's time to get into Epic versus Apple, day three. More reports coming out between the lawsuit of Apple versus Epic Games, specifically this one about Microsoft and how they accidentally got Shadow taken off of the App Store. When Microsoft got rejected for putting xCloud on the App Store, they said, hey, but what about Shadow? They do the same thing. And then Apple was like, hey, yeah, you're right. And then they pulled it. And then Shadow had to be like, wait, we don't do the same thing. We offer access to Windows 10 PCs. We, we're not a storefront. Like you have, like you access a computer and not like buying games like xCloud. So we're different. And then they got put back on. It was a misunderstanding, but it was Microsoft's fault. And it's not Microsoft's fault that xCloud isn't appearing on other consoles. According to an email conversation between the CEO of Epic and the head of Xbox, they essentially said, we haven't given up on putting xCloud on everything possible. Okay, we want to put it on PlayStation, we want to put it on an ATM, we want to put it on your Samsung smart fridge, we want to put it on your Wi-Fi connected toaster, we want it to be the Skyrim of services everywhere, special edition, xCloud on everything. But Peloton's not on anything anymore, at least according to the latest hard report, which is that Peloton is recalling all of its treadmills due to a flaw that ended up killing one child and 72 reports of adult users, children, and pets being pulled under the rear of the treadmill, including 29 reports of injuries to children, such as second and third degree abrasions, broken bones, and lacerations, and as I mentioned, leading to one death. So over 125,000 of the Tread Plus units from Peloton are being pulled, but this is coming after the CEO of Peloton scoffed at the Consumer Protection Agency's uh, inaccurate and misleading statements that there's no reason to stop using the Tread Plus. And now it's obviously led to uh, an unfortunate incident. And now the CEO is apologizing for that decision and that they made a mistake and that they will now recall the treadmill. But it's not just stopping there. It also came out that Peloton has a security flaw that lets attackers grab sensitive user data just from the outside. And when it got reported to Peloton, they were just like, okay, we're going to put that behind a paywall. So they patched it slightly so that it was then only able to be accessed by members instead of anybody outside of the organization. And it wasn't until the person who found this flaw brought it to the media that Peloton then went like, oh yeah, we're gonna 
We're gonna fix that. Peloton just not doing very well. It all started with that one holiday ad that they put out and it's just been downhill since then. <gasps> Peloton? Which, by the way, did you know they're downhill treadmills? Which, like, at first sounds like, uh, yeah, of course there would be. But then you think about it and how do you get a downhill incline and not run forward? It's downhill inc the treadmills are a thing. But while Peloton is pulling products, HTC appears to be launching products. We have two new Vive VR headsets that are supposed to be coming out in just about a week on May 11th at ViveCon 2021. They're going to be the Vive Pro 2 and the Vive Focus 3 Business Edition. So focusing more on the professional side of things as opposed to the consumer side of things. It does seem like HTC has partially given up with working with the consumer side of their VR headsets for for now at least. But SpaceX is not giving up on the consumer side and they've reported that they have over 500,000 pre-orders for the Starlink satellite internet service to which Elon Musk said that they have more than enough capacity for. However, once you start adding in millions, the issue then becomes urban density where they can't necessarily get the signal to everybody, but they can handle 500,000 once that actually rolls out to everyone. And Signal tried to roll out an ad to everyone, at least on Instagram, where they tried to tell you why they were targeting you very specifically using Facebook targeting advertiser data saying something like you got this ad because you're a newlywed Pilates instructor and you're cartoon crazy. This ad was used your location to see you're in La Jolla. Signal showing off that they had several of these where they just targeted such as you got this ad because you're a GP with a master's in art history also divorced. Just rubbing that one right back into your skin. But Facebook didn't like that. Signal calling them out because they got their advertising platform pulled from Facebook and essentially saying that Facebook will sell your data that they have on you, but they don't want you to know what they're selling about you. And once you do that, it's completely wrong. Signal. Just going all sorts of mad lad on Facebook. And y'all's going mad lad. This is something, this is data I have on you that I'm gonna report to you. Y'all are buying Chromebooks. Okay, up 275% in one year. It's the largest market in computers at this point. It, it's it's topping all of the charts by like huge margins. Desktops are down 4%, laptops are up 62%, 52% increase on tablets. Why are you guys not buying desktops? Buy more desktops. Oh no, GPS, got it, sorry, my bad. And while Chromebooks are taking off, Stadia took down. It was bad, not good. Anyways, their head of product left the company recently as well as the person who headed their individual game studio. And now it's been reported that several other staff members have left to join the new game studio, Haven Studio, with the person who read, ran the Stadia games and entertainment. So Stadia just continuing to bleed dry and likely will be closed down probably by the end of this year, if not end of 2022. It's not a complete failure like Quibi, but it's still pretty bad. But what's not pretty bad is actually pretty cool. Flat pack morphin pasta. That's right, my friends. Go, go morphin pasta. Scientists at Carnegie Mellon University have found a way to flat pack pasta by like cutting little divots into it. And so that when, way, when you put it into the water, it expands into the shape that you want it to be. And that way you get to eat all of these fun little pasta shapes. Look at that. Look at the curling that it does in the water. This will be good for shipping. Obviously it'll make it so that you can flat pack it, keep it in a nice little container instead of having these big things that are awkward and you you accidentally punched the egg noodles and now they're broken in half. It's a rough life. It also might be a rough time waiting for new AMD CPU. So why don't you go ahead and check out yesterday's episode of Hot News where we talked about the fact that AMD might not be launching new Zen 4 CPUs until the end of 2022. And with that being said, I'll see you in tomorrow's episode of Hot News, my friends. Cheers.